Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Kanushi's Corner. So for this episode, I was really, really hype about it. Uh, still am. I was going to do the unboxing and then uh, my equipment like stopped recording. So I already kind of have everything open and unpacked, but I'm still going to go over with it. Uh, over it with you. This is the custom starter set for the Final Fantasy TCG for Final Fantasy X. Uh, you can find it, uh, I think it's like $25, $30. You get the 100 cards. This is the base deck. And this is a customization deck that comes with it. Uh, this is one of my favorite Final Fantasy. I mean, it's probably, I don't know, it's hard to argue that it's my favorite one because there are so many good ones that I like. And even the ones I don't like, I, I enjoy for one reason or another. Uh, so... Um, but it is definitely one of my favorites. It's definitely the Final Fantasy that really got me into the series. It's the first one that I finished. And uh, so I, I still wanted to present it with you, even though the initial recording went bad. Uh, I'm going to kind of just breeze through these. I sort of read them a little bit, but uh, it also comes with these. This is a uh, how-to. It tells you what the elements are, kind of how deck building works in this game, the different kind of abilities that the cards have, uh, as far as like uh, triggered, in this case, autoed or like uh, static abilities or stuff that you have to tap to do or special abilities where you have to ditch a card. That's the same type to use them. And then the uh, how tapping, untapping, crystal points, the different card types on the back. It's got some uh, how battle in the stack and everything works. It's pretty cool. This other thing that it came with is a little more important for the deck. It's got uh, the... How to customize it so it explains to you how the deck works at a base as wind water uh, what you're going to be how, you, how you're going to be kind of like using the customization cards and then explains to you how wind and water work and on the back it gives you the wind and fire and the water and fire breakdowns um, long story short I can get this back over okay Long story short, this version is just very, uh, very speedy. You bounce your opponent's stuff and try to like wash it away and then break through with Titus and Yuna's effects. Uh, this one kind of does the same thing, except you're just like flat out removing them with the red instead of kind of like bouncing them and whatever with the blue. And then this version is just like kind of full control, blow them up, wash them away and tap your stuff sideways and do some damage. So it does give way... Oh, way way better, more detailed breakdowns in the actual uh, pam pamphlet. But I think I'm, hold on, I'm folding this. I think I'm folding this wrong. Maybe yeah, that seems right. There we go. I'm pretty sure I got it. Okay, so yeah, it uh, if you buy it, it kind of like teaches you how to use it and how it's supposed to work and everything too, which is nice. It's not just like leaving you. In the open air so for this we have uh titus you got two of those i'm gonna just start going through the cards i might not read all of them uh i just literally got through almost the whole thing and realized that it wasn't recording but i will do my best to show them off and i'm sorry if the can if you have any tips for a better camera um something that like holds the focus better gets better you know you can leave leave uh, advice in the comments below and if you really want to help uh, accelerate the process of me affording the camera feel free to donate uh, i'll leave kofi links and everything in the description below but for now this is uh Titus. you get two of these the cost required to cast them is reduced by one for each category 10 forward you control so he's three but he could be free free better than three uh ex first whenever Titus enters. You may search for a Jekt, Yuna, or Waka by card name. It says right here. And add it to your hand. Whenever it attacks, all the forwards you control gain 2,000 until end of turn. It's pretty good. Pretty good. Little beefy thing. Then we got this Yuna here. I think there's three of these. Yeah. And so Yuna, when she enters, you select one of the two following. If you have received five points of damage or more, select up to two. Of the two following, you can choose a job with cost two or less in your break zone and play it onto the field and activate all your backups. And then if you have damage three, she also gives all your guardian forwards plus 2k power. So they both are power boosters and help boost up the team. That's pretty cool. Lulu's a really neat card. She can, uh, when she enters, you can choose a Yuna or a summon in your break zone and get it back. So she can kind of uh, bolster your forces and 
recoup your stuff and whenever you cast a summon choose one forward your opponent controls and it becomes 5k power until end of turn this only happens once or excuse me this only triggers on your turn then we have pain here pain is a uh, uh, 10 2 character technically but they're just marking it as 10 here she's one of Yuna's friends in 10 2 and yeah she's like super hardcore goth girl really badass pretty cool story to her too as a new character intro introduced I think they did a pretty solid job making her her like you know making her, her own thing and just yeah because everyone else in that game kind of returned except for her but Anyway, whenever she enters, if you control a card named Yuna, you draw a card. And whenever she enters, you choose up to three backups you control. If you control Riku, you can activate them. So uh, much like in 10 2, if you got the whole squad out, she can sort of... Uh, if you got the other two out, you put her out, you got the whole squad, you get a bunch of benefits. A lot of cool, good things happen. All right, I'm going to pick the deck up now. We're going to try to go a little faster. we got the Thief. Whenever a card is put from your opponent's deck into the break zone, it gains 2k until end of turn. And then when he attacks, your opponent puts a card from the top of the break zone. So he mills them and gains power. Whenever Selkie uh, is put from the field into the break zone, your opponent mills two. And if both cards are of the same type, draw a card. Same type. I guess that means the, like if they're both wind or... Then we got Brother. Uh, a really cool, fun character and exceedingly broken bl at Blitzball, being objectively faster than anyone. If you want a Final Fantasy X tip, if you ever plan to play Blitzball or want to ble beat Blitzball in that game, you recruit Brother, and he is just objectively faster. You throw the ball, you run around, nobody can catch him. Uh, it's it's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy. You set, like, uh, Titus at the end, give him the ball after when no one's there to defend because brothers corral them all and then have him use the eject shot. Goalie can't do nothing. Bada bing, bada bam. It's uh, it's so cheese and easy. But if you're struggling with Blitzball and don't want to like really do it, that's uh, yep. Ha ha. Brother good. Also, this card version of Brother, when it enters, you may search for one Category 10 forward and add it to your hand. So he tutors you out any Final Fantasy X character you need. Ninja here, you can pay two green, uh, two wind crystal points, whatever you want to call it. Tap him, put him into the break zone, choose a backup, cost three or less, and break it. You got the white mage here, you tap, uh, tap it with a crystal point and put it into the break zone. Choose a forward, you reactivate it and gain it, give it a thousand. So it's a way to turn your guys back online and give you some value out of turn uh, archer is gonna do uh, wind cp and tap it put it into the break zone choose a forward and opponent controls during this turn the next damage it deals to a forward becomes zero instead so you can uh, use archer to kind of mitigate damage and save your things get free blocks or whatever this is a cool ex burst the sliff all forwards gain 1k and you draw a card. Be really nice as an EX burst. Now we're on to some guardians. We've got Aura in here. One of my favorites. I love that shot. Like him standing over the crowd. I'm pretty sure that's uh I can't remember if that's the opening scene or halfway through the game when he's standing there looking down at the Blitzball Arena. Anyway, uh summons and abilities your opponents uh use whatever must choose him if possible. And if you control a summoner or a guardian. Uh, job as forward other than him he gains when Orin is put from the field into the break zone draw a card and then if you have damage three he gains 3,000 power so he bumps himself up to 7k it's pretty solid Riku here love the art on that very spunky and nice she has the EX burst so this will trigger also if she flips for damage whenever she attacks choose one forward your opponent controls return it to their hand if you control a summoner job forward put it on top of their deck and draw a card instead so she can if you've got a summoner out she can really mess up your opponent's stuff here we have waka uh, waka's ability is mentioned in the guide so you can remove three real counters from him and use the special ability without paying any cost which is nice and then when he or category 10 forward enters you place a real counter on him also nice and his ability is to choose a forward 
and it loses all abilities until end of turn and break it. So notably, if you have six, nine, whatever increments of real counters on Waka, you can just do all of those and like bam, 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 and break three things your opponent has and start clearing their board. And open them. It's pretty good. Kamari here. Really, uh, a really cool character. I like his story with the him being the runt and just kind of outclassed in a lot of ways, but still being really just amazing and tough. It's, it's a very cool... There, there's a lot of uh, strength of will stories in 10 that I enjoy, and Kamari's is especially one of them. So the card itself, the cost required to cast Kamari is reduced by one for each guardian you control. So he's at six, but he could be free. Free is better than six. The job guardians other than Kimari also cannot be chosen by your opponent's abilities, which is good. Basically gives them all hex proof. Uh, and the category 10 characters other than Kimari you control cannot be chosen by summons. So your 10 guardians basically get turned off for interaction. A targeted interaction, so that's nice. I forget how to say her name. Lene. Lenny. Lin. I don't exactly remember, but I know she's like the the intent to the Lady Yuna, like gets her memory sphere or whatever. Uh, when your opponent casts a summon, activate her. So she's a, it's kind of like free mana in a way. Scholar here, if you tap it, you can put it into the break zone, choose a forward you control, bounce it, so you kind of protects your stuff. Here we have another summoner. It's a backup though. You can tap it. Like it's not actually a summoner. It's a standard unit, so be careful of that. Uh, tap it, put summoner into the break zone, cast a summon from your hand. Its cost is reduced by two, but cannot be zero, so it won't be free. We have a different white mage. Whenever this enters, you can pay a blue crystal point. If you do so, draw a card. Here we have Kuchulane, the impure EX burst. So either when you summon it or flip it for damage, you choose one forward your opponent controls. It loses a thousand attack for each dull character they control. And then you draw a card. So that's a base deck. It's pretty solid. Definitely a lot of like control in the blue and like boost your stuff up in the uh, boost your stuff up and swing in the in the wind, but also some mill in there. That was kind of weird to see. So here we have the upgrade deck. We got Jekt here. Uh, really cool artwork on that. I love that with the sword and the um, yeah, it's really tight. It definitely mirrors how. I mean, uh, spoiler alert, how he looks at the end of the game as an Aeon, uh, <laughs> like with the sword and everything. It's just, it's cool. It's cool. So whenever Jack enters the field, choose one forward. Your opponent controls, deal 4K to it or 1K more f and 1K more for each category 10 you control. So it could be a big blow up removal spell. And then you can put them in your graveyard to search for a light or dark character and add it to your hand. So you can potentially tutor out that Titus for you, which is nice. You can get some Braskas. Braska is uh, also in the custom thing. It mentions something about a summoner build with Braska, so I think that's cool. Uh, he is himself a summoner. You may use Braska's special ability by discarding a summon instead of discarding a card named Braska. Summon ability, choose one forward, deal at 7k. Grand summon takes a little bit of mana there. And you choose two forwards opponents control, break them. He deals one point of damage. Oh, wow. That's okay. Yeah, that's a grand summon. All right. That is uh... a right. So choose two forwards, break them. Wow. Yeah, I could definitely see a deck built around that guy. That's pretty cool. Uh, Bahamut. If you have three or more fire summons in your break zone, Bahamut gains plus 2,000 power. And if you... Oh, this is actually like a creature version. Okay, that's cool. Because uh, because of how 10 works. They made like creature versions of this. Oh, yeah, that's really, really cool. Oh, that's so cool. Okay. I was wondering how they were going to do that. Anyway, so if you have three or more fire summons in your break zone, he gains plus 2k. And if you have seven or more, he also gains when he attacks... Deal 5k damage to all the forwards your opponents control. You can impulse for a fire and deal 4k to all forwards they control. Or you can mega flare by tapping him and then discarding a Bahamut. Choose one forward, deal at 9k. That is, uh, okay, that's pretty cool. 
Ooh, that gives me deck ideas. All right, then we got some ninjas. You can tap ninja, choose a forward. It can't block. Ninjas are pretty good. I have there, there's a bunch of those in several decks. Ooh, this is a nice black mage. Look at that's from Tact yeah, Tactics Advanced TA. Yeah, I love love that art. So cool, so mysterious and destructive. I love it. Um, to fire and tap this and sacrifice it to the break zone. Choose a fire summon and add it to your hand, so you can even get your summons back for you. Got a little warrior here, a standard unit from uh, uh, Final Fantasy One, the one two advance. You can see here, I like the art on it though. You can tap them, put them in your break zone, choose a forward, give it one K, or pay a little bit of crystal points here and tap them and choose a forward, deal it five K. Got two of those, got black, another, a different black mage is from 14. Pay a red, tap it, put them into the break zone, deal something 5k. So we've got some board snipers here. Here's a summon version of Bahamut. Before paying the cost to cast it, you can remove 10 fire characters or category X characters in your break zone to reduce the cost by five. Choose a forward, deal 10k to it. If it's put from the field into the break zone, remove it. So. There you go. There's the actual summon version. That's pretty crazy. And so you can use, since these are named Bahamut, I, I can only, you know, you can use them for the abilities on the other Bahamut. We have an Ifrit. So cool. <laughs> uh, choose one forward. Deal it 5k damage. If your opponent has received 5 points of damage or more, deals 8k. I use Ifrit so much in 10. Oh, here's another pain. This is cool. Here's a wind pain. Uh, this one has EX Burst. Whenever she enters, you may search for a Yuna or Riku. Add it to your hand. That's neat. Here is the 10-2 Riku. And whenever this one enters the battlefield, activate all your forwards. That's cool. It'd be even better if, I mean, the EX Burst is good. Because if you flip it on one damage and then all your stuff stands back up, that'd be really great. But it'd be even better if this had back attack. Because then you could, uh, like, get it out of turn, too. That'd be pretty neat. It'd probably be a little too strong then, though, really. Uh, here's an Alexander. You choose one character, cost four or more, and break it. Just blow it up. You get two of those. This is a beautiful Yuna from 10 2 here. It's a songstress job instead of summoner because she gives up summoning at the end of 10, but still, it's gorgeous. Whenever Yuna attacks, all characters other than light and dark opponent, other all characters other than light and dark opponent control that's worded a little weird opponent controls lose all their abilities until so she turns off everything and then you can sphere change name one element and job yuna becomes the element and job until end of turn that's kind of interesting then we have fomfrit the darkening cloud this is a summon that allows each player to select a forward they control and put it into their break zone interesting there's a different tedious this one's from Dissidia. Anyway, uh, the category X forwards other than him you control get a thousand power. That's kind of nice. And whenever he enters, you may return a backup you control to its owner's hand. When you do so, choose a forward, return it to its owner's hand. So you can kind of like uh, bounce some stuff with him. That's kind of nice. And then if uh, you use quick hit, you activate him and give him 2K. So he can be a, a sneaky defender. Ooh, this is a nice version of Jekt. I like the... Art smile there and everything. It's really nice. Whenever he enters the battlefield, choose one forward. If one or more forwards were attacking this turn, return the chosen forward to its owner's hand. So, where's my back attack? I want to be able to flash that in. He's a blitz baller job to it. <laughs> He's a baller, a blitz baller. Anyway, if one or more forwards were attacking this turn, return the chosen forward to its owner's hand. Hmm. So I guess you choose, and then it stays chosen. If three or more forwards were attacking this turn, break the chosen forward and draw a card instead. Hmm. Weird. You can ject block to choose any number of summons, auto abilities, action abilities, or special abilities, and cancel them. That's pretty cool. I'm still not sure on his main ability. So when he enters, you choose a forward. One or more forwards were attacking. Return the chosen forward to its owner's hand. Three or more forwards were attacking. Break the chosen forward and draw a card. But you can't back attack or flash him in, so you can't use him out of turn. So, I don't know. It's weird. Maybe I don't understand the implications. Here we go. The Fire Orin. That's really cool. The category 10 forwards you control game. Brave. That's great. 
and then you can choose one blocking forward. It gains ten thousand or one thousand power until end of turn. That's pretty cool. That that Orin I really like. Ooh, here's a really nice Lulu. So serious and stern. Uh, whenever she enters the battlefield, choose one forward. You may put one backup other than her into the break zone. And if you do, deal that. So you can sacrifice one of your backups in order to deal 7k to something. Here's Bellius the Gigas, EX Burst. Choose one forward until the end of turn. It gains 1k haste and first strike. Draw a card so it replaces itself and does good stuff. Here's another Tetis. This is uh, the same, same one as the box one. And then we have Sin. You get three Sins. This is really cool. This one is a dark monster. Now keep in mind, if you're running this, you cannot run this. This is um because it's dark and, and light, and you can only have or you can run them, but you can only it's like you can only have one of them on the field or something like that. Like you can have them in your deck, but you can only have one of them on the field. And then you can't pitch them to make uh, to make mana, whereas like you can throw this card away and make two water mana. But if you throw this card away, you don't make any. It's weird, but let's check out Sin. This is really cool. Get the so gross, and sad. And... Man, it's such a messed up, such a messed up story and everything with um, you, Yevin. And anyway, when Sin is added to your hand from the deck. Due to a search effect, you may pay three. When you do, choose a forward and break it. When it enters, break all forwards other than sin. If you have received six points of damage, break all forwards your opponent controls instead. So, it could be a really cool haymaker comeback kind of thing. That's really tight. Um, I'm going to just kind of leave it at that. I think this looks really cool. It's going to be a lot of fun. I might make a video about uh, about it, but for now, I think just going over it is a, is enough. Uh, I, I like that they give you the options to customize it, the extra cards. They give you a deck to just jam with and play, and then you have all this to kind of play with and stick it in there as you want or go multicolor maybe. They give you the Braska option uh, to do like a summoning. There, no, there he is. Well, he's right there. They give you the Braska option to kind of go with a summoning deck. There, I think there's just a lot of really neat and interesting things in here. And uh, yeah, if you if you liked what you saw, be sure to uh, like, subscribe, maybe leave a comment or something. That'd be cool. Other than that, thanks for watching. If you ever want to uh, go out and pick one of these up because you like Final Fantasy trading card game, I hope this video helps you make that decision if you wanted to or not or you know what whatever it's uh it's all good thanks for watching have a nice day and until next time see you later